Okay, so hello and welcome back or welcome if you are new here. My name is Josie. Welcome to my channel. Today we have a very special video. We are in Kanchanaburi in case you aren't caught up. Watch this video, then go watch my last one. We arrived here in Kanchanaburi. We had a look around, but today we're gonna go and we're going to rent a bike. We're going to go to the famous war memorial and the cemetery. And then we're gonna go to the even more famous bridge over the river Kwai. Then we're gonna check into a place that we're gonna stay tonight, but that is top secret. So you're gonna to have to watch to find out where we end up. But make sure you like and subscribe. And now let's see what we've got up to today in Kanchanaburi, day number two. Okay, so we have got here to the Death and Railway Museum where you can kind of see the artifacts and get some more info about what happened to the people of war here from all different uh, countries and nationalities. And again, from Australians, which I'm Australian, so <laughs> we're gonna learn a little bit more about what happened to them and how this railway was built under the really sad and dire circumstances that it was. So let's go have a look. I don't think we can take video, so we might have to talk about it in a second. Let's go check it out. So we just caught out of the museum. Death Railway Museum. The Death yeah. Railway Museum. The, the railway that the prisoners of war were, I guess, under direction of the Japanese who were occupying Thailand at the time, forced to build this railway so the Japanese could get directly to Myanmar rather than have to go around Singapore, if you know geography. A bunch of, of uh, soldiers who were prisoners of war under the Japanese dying. Um, trying to help the Japanese build this railway. So pretty horrific stuff, only sort of, you know, 70 years ago. I just wanted to sort of touch on what we saw in the museum as we weren't allowed to uh, take any video. So I didn't want to vlog in there, but we saw how they would sort of like a mock-up version of how they were put into to the train cabins. So we also saw a little scaled version of what it sort of looked like as they were building it. We saw a visual representation based on nails. Each nail represented 500 deaths um, and where they came from, Australia, Malaysia, British, American. They were severely malnourished as they were fed only like a little over 2000 calories a day, which wasn't enough for anyone, let alone all the work that they're doing building the railway. We saw artifacts that were recovered. One of them said Australia, which again, we're Australian, so that kind of hits a little bit home for us. We saw like scaled versions of the carriages on the trains and everything like that. So we just saw a little bit about what it would have been like back then as well. So let's have a look around the cemetery and the Australian area is just back there. So we're gonna look walk around that one. So we're just walking through the war cemetery now. And as we were in the museum just earlier, it looked out over this cemetery. And I believe we read that this was basically just a mass grave. They didn't bury anyone back when it happened. They basically just put bodies in this area and we've since gone in and put these memorial. Along the railway itself, there was 144, I think I read earlier, um, different like makeshift sort of grave sites for everyone that died along the railway obviously as they die they they bury them along the railway in different grave sites and then they kind of brought all the names back here and made the plaques out of the names so even if they but were buried burial, yeah. somewhere else they've just remembered them here with a plaque so and, and there are bodies under this ground but it's a mass burial site so we don't know who's where and they're probably all just chucked in the same sort of burial hole together wow so look at this one uh this one here it really personalizes it you will live in my heart our love will never die loving wife glad oh. so we are just heading up the main sort of street of Kanchanaburi and we're just heading to get our bike um, it's just a little bit easier to go and adventure and go to places that are a little bit further away and all the things we want to do over the next couple of days with the bike so we're just on the way to grab it now it is so hot if you can see me sweat that is literally sweat it's pretty gross <laughs> and then after this obviously we're gonna have a little quick trip I'll stop at the bridge over the, on the River Kwai and then we're going to keep heading on to the place that we're staying tonight which you're going to stick around to see because it's worth it. Alright, let's go get this bike. So this is really cute. If you watched our videos from a while ago when we were in Chiang Mai last, we actually got a yellow bike the first time and we're getting a yellow bike this time and we named it Bumblebee. So maybe we should name this one Bumblebee number two. Let me know in the comments. Got a little bit of water on the lens and I can't get that off just yet. But just so you have like an idea, it was 1,500. 1,500 for three days, which is very expensive for Chiang Mai. Yeah. But 
but I looked at the only two places that had 155cc bikes in Chang in um, Kanchanaburi, and that was the cheapest out of the two. So yeah, account for a little bit more on um, bike rental if you want to get one in Kanchanaburi. But oh, doggies! hotel now and then we're on the way we had just filled up with petrol on the way back from getting the bike and we went past a street that said um, br bridge over the river quite and we were just like let's just come we'll just do it now so here we are change of plans but this is the bridge over the river quite it's very um there's lots of market stalls I guess lots of people obviously your attraction will come here so it's a little bit Instagram versus reality right now where <laughs> there's a lot of people in one <laughs> one spot if you can see but that's the bridge, yeah. right there. So this is the bridge on the River Quay and there's a little restaurant, I don't know if you can see it, down there. And we're probably gonna head there for some lunch before we get going on our hour's trip on the bike, but why don't you tell us a little bit about the <laughs> <laughs> well, we've already kind of talked about the other other history of it, and this is this is essentially like the famous part of the railroad track. And Josie will show you later on, but you'll see like the pylons that the bridge is actually on. Like it's a metal bridge now, but it was a bamboo bridge when it was built, and it was bombed in the war and knocked down. Um, but the cement pylons that were built to cover, cover the bridge are the same pylons from. So there. you can see the like bomb marks. You can on see them the bomb still. marks and, and that sort of stuff on the side of it. But yeah, it's pretty famous. You can see these little black like, platforms um, that we're standing on right now. And basically the train's still operational and runs through here. And I didn't know that till about a second ago and I was like, what do we do if the train comes? And he was just like, get out. Yeah, if you're on the train, on the train track when the train comes, you just, Don't be. To, you just have to stand on one of these little platforms off to the side and let the train go past. And if they're full, run. Run, <laughs> run really fast. Those pegs we saw at the museum today that were salvaged and put in the museum are from this bridge. They're everywhere. We just walked through all of them and it's just a bit weird to find that they came from this exact place. So it is a bit busy here. Just for reference, it's about three o'clock in the afternoon and there's a lot of people. <laughs> Look at this. It goes straight back that way. It's crazy it's still in operation. So this is really funny because up until now, we always just have a luggage bag with us. We're not like backpackers. We don't really travel light, to be honest. We're usually over our luggage limit. But on this trip to Kanchanaburi, we only decided to bring our little backpack things just to house like a couple of bits of clothes just for the three or four days that we're here. But now we can't fit it in the motorbike. <laughs> so everything's on the floor and we're trying to pack it all up. <laughs> but I think I'm gonna have to, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my camera gear. So we're just in the middle of figuring uh, this mess out and then we're on the hourish drive to this place that we're staying in again stick around for it i haven't seen it it's gonna be very nice 2 a.m in the car playing our favorite song turn it up windows down we sing along okay i know i look funny right now but we have about 15 minutes to go and we both have very sore behinds from sitting on the bike. It's probably been about 50 minutes, 40 minutes, I'm not sure. But we saw a sign that said coffee and we've just pulled over. I'm not gonna pull my camera out because I had to disassemble it to put it in the bag. So I'm just on the GoPro at the moment, but we just found a sign that said coffee. We're only about 15 minutes away though, so it shouldn't be too long. So alive and tonight I'm thinking that I don't Wanna go Wanna go Calling sick in the morning Baby don't leave They don't need to know we're out here Wild and free They say we're crazy It's too much Deep in love oh. oh, this is everything With you right next to me So alive and tonight I'm thinking that I don't wanna go
Okay. Well, I am burnt from that ride. Look at that. <laughs> so we have made it to the float house. We're in Sayok, just sort of outside of Kanchanaburi. We got here and we pulled into the car park. We parked the motorbike. We went down onto this pier. We saw a dog. <laughs> and then we got on this boat that took us up the river. It, I've never done a trip like that before, ever. I've never caught a boat like that and traveled up a beautiful river like that ever in my life. It was amazing. We got off here at the float house and all of these houses are just like on the, on the river. This is crazy. And this is what you guys told me to do. You told me to come to like one of the floating places. So I'm so glad that we're here. It's really late. It's probably quarter past six and we haven't eaten basically all day. So we're about to go get some dinner. But first, let me show you our room. Okay, so I figured that showing you vlog style is probably gonna give you like the best connection with this place so you can see it kind of how I see it this veranda um, backyard <laughs> we have is on the river it's floating we've got all the other houses down there and then obviously the river this way now we've seen some people jump in over here and then just kind of float down the river to the end so uh, like this video if you'd like me to do that because <laughs> otherwise I don't know if I'm brave enough but that's what we have out here and then we have two chairs just on this part so you can sit here and enjoy the amazing river views now heading inside and we have the bedroom straight away looking straight out onto the river which is amazing we have a little tv the aircon is on so we'll see if it even cools it down because michael and i like it really really cold over in this corner you have the chairs um just a little sitting area or you can eat some food there or whatever you'd like just in front of the bed which is really exciting there's so many things it's actually a lot bigger than you think so coming past these chairs this is the front door you have some nibblies like a mini bar type thing now i haven't really explored yet so i'm assuming that's locked okay i don't know what that is coming through this way from the front door you have a little reading corner with a little desk you have a place to put your bags, which we've already done, and you can get some work done here. That's gonna be really good for me, editing some vlogs tonight, cause the work doesn't stop. <laughs> now coming through here, we have the bathroom. So this is really cool. You have the like basin here, and it's out in this one room that there is, and you come into this door, and you have the shower in this room. That is so cool. I love that. It's a uh, open, so this is basically an outdoor shower because <laughs> this opens all the way. So, an indoor outdoor shower, the first one I've ever seen. <laughs> now come out this way to this other door, past the basin, and you have the toilet. Now, this one is an indoor outdoor, which is good. You probably want this one quiet, <laughs> private. Now we come back out through here and that's basically the tour. So we are just going to sit here and kind of de de decompress for a second, enjoy sort of the view out here and then we're probably going to go grab some food because it's a little bit past lunch and dinner. We haven't eaten. Not any at, food. At all. No, we had a muffin at Starbucks this morning. And I, had, I had a seven. That's it. Wow. Let's, let's go food. eat. <laughs> So change of plans, we're actually just going to order room service so we can enjoy these seats on our riverfront floating balcony. Before the sun goes <laughs> just down. Just before the sun goes down. So hopefully they come in time um, before it gets too dark and you can't see and the sun sets. So look how burnt I am from the ride. <laughs> what did you get? A blue margarita and I got a tequila sunrise just to enjoy this amazing view that we have in front of us here. So hopefully it comes in time before the sun goes down. So it took about an hour and a half <laughs> to get dinner, but besides that, we are really tired and hungry by now. We've got the omelette, Michael got some chicken wings, Michael got a burger with some chips, and I got a like stir-fried sort of prawn thing um, in some oyster sauce. Sorry for not getting Thai food, it's been a really long day. With I got food. Thai food. No, like for them, they'll see me getting a burger. Oh yeah, Michael, Michael felt like some Western food tonight. Well, <laughs> It's a long day with no food, and when I'm really hungry, I just want... Yeah, he food. likes...
burgers when he gets really hungry. Oh, don't knock the food. So we're going to probably eat this and then just... <laughs> he almost Nothing fell in his chair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to eat this and probably head to bed soon. I have some editing to do and it's pretty late now. So, All right, so I'm going to leave this one here. I'm going to get stuck into this food and make sure you do like and subscribe. We have an amazing day coming up tomorrow. We're going to visit the Erewhon Falls. Is that how I say it? Erewhon Falls. And we're going to go to Hellfire Pass and do a whole bunch of other things here near Kanjana Brewery. So make sure you like and subscribe. Watch what's coming up next. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching to the end. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye! I'm so scared! <laughs> Why are you so scared?